Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're talking about a potential ban list fix market watch. And here's what I mean by that. So every time there's a ban list, what happens in the market? All the cards that were on the ban list that came off the ban list go up in price, right? So in this video, we're going to be looking at how likely a card is to come off the ban list as well as what impact would it make if it came off the ban list, right? Because there are some cards like Divine Wind of the Mist Valley, right? I think there's an Equip spell that's on there. The Notorious Sacred Tree is on there. Like, I, 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 don't, um, I, don't, I don't get why that card was big, right? Um, if they came back, I don't think it makes a big impact, right? Like we saw, I mean, like we've seen some Orcus that pop, but we haven't really seen anything happen, right? Since Orcus is probably coming back, right? Um, and I'll be honest, if Sound of Great didn't get its new support, it wouldn't be topping either. Because even with its new support and all of its cards back at 3, best back of 2019, it's just still not tier 1, right? And so, we're talking about like cards like Thunder Dragon Colossus, like cards that come off the ban list and make an immediate impact in just about every deck, or in a lot of decks, right? But we're also talking about cards that might come off the list, right? Like Level Leader, uh, Change of oh no, Change of Heart's not we're also talking about cards that might come off the ban list, like Level Leader, Gofu, uh, Cold Wave. Like, are they really gonna come off the ban list ever? I hope not. I hope they never get a Level Leader format because for those who've never played in one, it's a horrendous format. And Level Leader in like the format we have now, I can't imagine how horrible that would be. Um, I want, so we're gonna talk about that, and the cards I have on screen here are cards that I think fit both of those categories. Starting with, of course, Heavy Metal Fills Electrolyte. Like, we're not gonna talk, do a ban list discussion video without talking about this card, which only has two printing, by the way. Uh, and both of the, you know, this is the newest one, 2018. So this is a six, seven year old card, right? And it's funny, for those who didn't play back then or are unaware, before it was Heavy Metaphors Electrified, Elemental Hero Stratos was the card that everybody wanted. Bring Stratos back, bring back Stratos, bring back Stratos. And for a little bit there, Construct was a card that was like, there was a lot of Shadow Shadow players like, Construct, 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 right? Neither of those have been as loud as the Electromite people, right? The Electromite people. I think it's a religion to them. I think they pray to Heavy Metaphors Electrolyte that one day, one day it comes back. And so I think just that hype alone would make this card's price skyrocket. You add in the fact that it's actually a really good card. Like it's a really good card for Pendulums. Being able to place a card right up in your extra deck, being able to pop a card, a lot of Pendulum cards want to be destroyed. And then to add it, there's obviously the Astrograph Sorcerer, you know, combination situations you get to just draw a card free advantage and on top of all of that it's a link monster like pendulums can't be summoned out from the extra deck like they were in master uh, rule three and electro might help that now obviously we've gotten cards like beyond the benjamin see the pendulum like we have gotten link monsters that are good kind of like the electro might replacement so that does scare me a little bit that the card's never coming back Right, like giant true nades never come back. So, with that all being said, I could see Electro might be a really good pickup at the ten, twelve dollar mark. It's kind of high. Um, I would hone in though on the original version. Like, it's not that much pricier, and it's the original version, right? And who knows if this becomes a thirty dollar card, and you have four for fourteen ninety nine. We look at that real quick. That's fifty nine ninety six before shipping and handling. I don't even know if there is shipping if you buy it from the right person. You've earned free shipping. Yep, so shipping is taxes on your state, from your state. And then if it gets to 30, you sell them off for 30, after taxes and fees is 25. That's a hundred dollars. The forty dollar profit. Right? And so that's if it hits 30. It could hit higher. It could hit lower. Right? Like spend your money how you feel. But I really like having that for the I, I always say every market watch, I feel like it's a disservice if I don't say, spend your money how you feel. Right? Even if, if I'm talking about Yu Gi Oh! If I'm talking about Pokemon, if I'm talking about 
uh, stocks, if I'm talking about garage sales, I'm like, and whatever I'm selling, I should tell somebody, hey, spend your money how you feel. I think this card could be a great buy, but it also could be a really bad buy. <laughs> right? And that grass looks greener. It's it's at three, or that one in Master excuse me. It's at one in Dual Links. Uh, I don't know what's at in the OCG because I don't care. Um, the TCG could be up for it. Just a one -up. Right? Now, we have some left arm offering shenanigans. Um, and, but, but the thing is, too, we have Ash Blossom, right? We didn't have Ash Blossom in the TCG when that grass was first out. And I think if you played Master Duel, you played with that grass. Like, that grass, really, those decks don't just run Master Duel. Um, now, Maxi is interesting because that grass and speeder decks usually are like, like Horus, Dragon Ruler, Shiranui, Burning Abyss, um, Phantom Knights. They like to, because any zombie deck really, they like to special summon from the graveyard. And so maybe the lack of maxi could be big, but Dimension Shifter was also not a thing the last time that grass was screener. I activate that grass was screener. Chain Dimension Shifter, you lose. So I think it's interesting, especially as a $20 card, especially if only if Raging Tempest, one copy from Raging Tempest, like the bandless hype is already hitting. So could be a good buy. I believe this is the most expensive card we're talking about today, though. So, also keep that in mind. Because near mints are like 20. Um, and I don't see this card coming back to 3. And just the fact that it's so limited, in and of itself, could hurt this card's value. It's something to keep in mind. Um, the next card we're going to talk about... Kind of. Here it is. The next card we're going to talk about is the Ultimate Rare version. Now, this has an interesting looking graph. The gap between first ten and unlimited. I don't know if I've seen it this wide before. So if you got those first ads, or if you're able to get a hold of a first set, I mean, we already see what it's able to do over here. Let me see if I can sort by first set. There it is, right there. First ads. Oh my goodness, a lot of heavy plays. First sets near mint for wind up carrier is in mighty ultimate rare are. 2770 and the card's banned. Now this is the cheapest card. I know I know that's more that's a higher price point than that guy's with screener, right? Because you can't just get the unlimited for eleven dollars, right? It does the same thing, right? And there's also I believe there's another printing. Um this is an ultra rare, right? Um but what's interesting, because this is a, like, I don't think wind-ups would be amazing. I think it would be okay. I don't think wind-ups would be amazing. We could see it like a Magic Arts Uniform Green thing, where Zen Mighty comes back right when, like, it gets new support, right? Coincidence? I think not, Konami, that Green comes back from Magic Spectres right after they get new support, right? Which is not a bad idea if they do the same thing with wind-ups. And that could, because wind-ups have a really good base, that could make wind-ups here too. And I, I'm being dead serious, but I also think wind-ups as an engine could be very lethal. The level three is a very popular level in Yu-Gi-Oh! And depending on how you're feeling, this card qualifies for the two rules. What are the two rules? How likely is the card to come back? Is it likely to come back at all? And what impact would it make? Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't have any chance of coming back, or it doesn't make a big impact, it won't go up in price. Or if it does, it'll come right back down. Whereas, if it has both those things, it could skyrocket. And so, with Wind Up Carrier and Mighty, it just depends on how you feel. Do you go get the first set ultis for 20 on the off, for 20, 30 bucks, on the off chance they turn it to 80? Do you get these ultra rares because you know they both do the exact same effect and your profit can still be that, you know, $40, $50, you just have to buy a bigger bowl, right? Kind of goes back and forth, right? Because we could buy, uh, you actually can't buy too many in bulk because a lot of people only have one or two, two or one, like very easily could this be bought out? Like, <laughs> Like, I don't think we're going to see somebody with more than two cop more than three copies of this card. So this person selling them at $24 is 10 of them. Right, because this person, Phantasm Gaming, probably already tried to buy this card out.
And this person's got 63, this person's got 48. This is Phantasm Gaming. Phantasm Gaming! <laughs> I'm not trying to expose their secrets, but... They already tried this, so they they have this locked and they have it loaded, and you can be like that too. We don't know when these people bought these cards. They could have bought it two years ago, right? Thinking that maybe someday it'll come back, and now these are just sitting there, and it's just... You have 63 copies at 30. Near Mint first says the ones that everybody wants, right? And you can be Phantasm Gaming, and I'm not Phantasm Gaming. Okay, this person's everywhere on this. I just noticed that. I did not notice it before. Um, but no, Cards of Connor is where I'm at on two G players. So if you guys see me, make sure you buy. Like if you see, if you have an option to get this one that's 25 cents or this one that's 25 cents, and Cards of Connor is this one, get that one. Does that make sense? Uh, so I think Wider Ter Terrier's a mighty could be really big. I'm not alone, clearly, but we'll see how it goes. Next is Zodiac Dryden. Zodiac Dryden has three different printings. I really like this one, actually. I love gold rares, though. And that's been really cool because nobody else does, so I can get them for super cheap. In all honesty, I might just get, like... I might just I might just get all 30 of these from Gamer's Choice, right? Because that's about... The cart's a little funky um, right now. Uh, but if I get rid of my Electromite for 570 I could get 30 of these just on the off chance it comes back because the maximum gold version the mega pack version they are cheaper right and their presence is gonna make Dryden in general a cheaper card but it's another card from Raiden Tempest it's another really old card and this card would also make an immediate impact we've seen Tri Brigade Zoo we know what it's capable of we know what Zodiac looks like as an engine we know just like I don't know, you just run like, in your tanky deck, you run a Thoroughblade, you run one Whiptail, what have you, like, one Whiptail is just like a splashable card in like an Earth Spam deck, so you can go from Whiptail into Dryden, so you have access into Borbo, you have access into Zeus, all these different things, it can be really good. Um, will Zodiac be as good as it was? Obviously not. Um, I think a card like Broad Bowl has to come back for that, and I think even in that case, other decks would benefit from that more than Zodiac. Um, this is probably the card I'm the least bullish on, if that makes sense. If you know what that phrase means. Bullish is just like, I think it's going to do really well. And as a matter of fact, as I'm looking, they're kind of in order. Right? They're in order of the cards I think will make the biggest jump to the least jump. I still think Zodiac Dryden could be a good buy, though. Because Zodiac is one of those decks, like Salads, like Orcus, it's got to be popular. And with the right pilot, the right decks around it, you know... This is gonna sound wild, but Stun Zodiac is actually pretty crazy. You get a barrier statue of the of the rocks or burrows, whatever it's called. You get your imperms, your torrentials, you know, your floodgates, you know. Because you can run TC Boom and Gozen and Rivalry. What deck can run all three of those? You can just sit on Dryden. Right? That's how the deck works. And Skill Drain obviously hurts. You can't run Skill Drain. Uh, but you can run D Fisher and Macrocosmos. Why would you not? And so, this is actually Zodiac in and of itself. I don't think it's as good as Labyrinth, Altergeist, even Salmon Great, but it would be an interesting tier two Roman strategy. Um, it needs Dryad to get there. So, especially if Dryad just like snaps back to three. Like last time it was at one, right? If it just snaps back to three, it could go up high really, really in value. Last card's a change of heart. I think we've seen change of heart in the meta. It doesn't make that big of an impact, but it is still a really good card. And change of heart for a card that's limited. That's a lot, like really high price cards. I mean, this this just feels like the move. You get a really cool looking rare in your quarter century rare. You get a great card for your quarter century rare. And if it comes to three, it might go to thirty, right? I think when you have a card like change of heart, you have to be very careful about buying anything other than the highest rare. And what I mean by that is like. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. There's 25, I think more than that, because there's special, like it's ultra rare, the secret rare, the prismatic. Uh, oh, this is an excellent. But like, there's just, there's so many versions of Change of Heart. I'm trying to find the most expensive version, or making sure at least 
that I can have the most expensive version. I think we already do. Uh, but the platinum might be pretty high. Oh, it's not, that's weird. That's not that high. Um, I think it is going to be the ultimate rare. So let's just zoom. Oh, no, excuse me, not the ultimate. It looks all, it's the ultra pharaohs. I excuse me. But magnificent Mazes. Is this the chase card for magnificent Mazes now? No, actually, no. This set's still doing this thing. A lottery ticket value thing. It's interesting. It's interesting that this what these cards, this uh, sets at. But um, in all seriousness, I don't think Change of Hearts gonna be like meta defining everywhere. I hate the card. Needs to go back on the ban list. But it is a good card, especially going second. You can bait out your negates. You can bait out the disruptions to get to your triple tactics talent, to get to your different things like that. Um, so I think Change of Heart could be a really good buy. Just be careful which one you buy because this one is the most expensive one for a reason. So if you don't have this one and you think like the, what did we just look at? The, uh, the gold rare, there was like a, see, what, what, what run we just look at? It was the uh, Pew. The per rare. <laughs> you think the per rare is going to be really high and it's starting to move up a little bit. It's probably not going to get over like four dollars. Maybe it will. If it does actually. And then it'll die back. Then. But let me know what you guys think. What cards do you think will make the biggest jump if they come back to the list? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure it fits those two requirements, right? That it's likely to come back. It's going to make a big jump. Um, just let me know in those comments down below. Make sure you guys click that like button, subscribe, and subscribe for more content. But most importantly, though, have a good day.